Hi everyone, welcome back to D-Squared Classroom. So far we've spent a lot of time talking about the heart, which is obviously an important organ, but so are the kidneys. I say kidneys plural because you have two of them. And unfortunately, one in seven Americans experience chronic kidney disease, according to the CDC. So they are prone to disease, much like the heart is. And they're responsible for quite a lot of functions in the body, not just producing urine, but also the regulation of water balance, electrolyte balance, pH balance. So they're pretty important to the overall function and health of your body. So let's talk about the kidneys today. We'll start with the basic anatomy of the kidneys. And in fact, the kidneys are part of a broader anatomical system in the body called the renal system. So that's made up of the kidneys, the veins and arteries that feed blood flow to and from the kidneys. And then once the kidneys produce urine, they need to be excreted from the body. So they're first carried by the ureters and then stored in the bladder and ultimately excreted from the body out of the urethra. Now we'll take a look at the anatomy of the kidney itself. So there's the outer granular region called the cortex and then a series of renal pyramids and then the renal pelvis is what houses the network of veins and arteries that feed blood flow to and from the kidney. Now the blood flow going to the kidney is coming directly from the heart. In fact, about a third of the cardiac output from the heart goes to the kidney via the descending aorta. So how do the kidneys actually work? To understand that, we have to zoom in quite a lot and focus on the part of the kidney called the nephron. Now this word is where the term nephrologist comes from. A nephrologist is a kidney doctor. And the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. And they're very tiny, so there's about a million in each kidney. It's what's responsible for the production of urine, and in the process of producing that urine, it's also ensuring a proper balance of electrolytes and water, as I mentioned previously. So this is what the nephron looks like, and we'll start on the very left with the glomerulus, which is this network of vessels that serves as a filter. So this is the section of the nephron that blood is initially going to enter, and that filter is going to filter out the major toxins from the blood. As it continues through the nephron, there's a series of channels that are going to allow important molecules like water and electrolytes to go back into the bloodstream and back to the main part of the body. So the fluid that you end up with has been stripped of the important things but contains the toxins and that's when you form the actual urine which is going to be secreted from the nephron then ultimately to the ureters, to the bladder, and out of the body through the urethra. Now there are terms for each of the functions that the nephron is responsible for. So first is filtration of the blood. Second is reabsorption of the important molecules like water and electrolytes back to the rest of the body. And then secretion as we talked about. So that's actually getting rid of the urine. So that covers the basics of renal function or kidney function. And there are a number of things that can go wrong. If you don't get enough blood flow to the kidney, it's gonna have a hard time functioning. If there's a lot of fluid pressing against the kidney, it's gonna have a hard time functioning. And what this can result in is poor filtration of the blood, meaning that you actually keep the toxins in the blood and in the body, which is not an ideal thing. And it also may impact the production of urine and if you're not able to adequately excrete urine, then that can lead to a host of problems as well. Thanks for listening. In the future, we'll talk about some of the drugs and devices that impact the kidney.